now, once again, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome back to The World Over. My next guest is one of the most successful recording artists in the world. Since she announced her presence in 2009 on Britain's Got Talent, she sang I Dreamed a Dream from Les Miserables, and boy, she floored the judges, including Simon Cowell, with her surprising angelic voice, proving you can't judge a book by the cover, and you shouldn't. Since then, she sold over 22 million albums and is currently on her first concert tour in the United States. An overnight success? Hardly. The road to fame has not been an easy one for Susan Boyle. I sat down with her recently at St. Malachy's in New York City to talk about her unlikely career and the faith that made it possible. Susan, you grew up in a family of nine, an Irish Catholic family, obviously a big one. What was it like growing up in that family, and what did it teach you about faith? Well, being the, being the youngest member of nine, you, you very much have to fight for a position, you know? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I had to fight quite a lot when, when I was at home because there were so many of us. Mm -hmm. So many different personalities with, uh, under the, the one roof. Right. And where faith came in, my mother and father were very strong Catholics. And uh, we, went, we, went to, we went to church every Sunday mm. and uh, with all the obligations and things like that. Mm. And uh, we, we had a, a good spiritual background. I was struck reading your autobiography, The Woman I Was Born to Be. Um, there were complications surrounding your birth, and the doctors suggested that your mother abort you. Tell me what happened. Well, they weren't very sure whether or not both of us would be able to survive. Mm -hmm. And she was given that option, but being a staunch Catholic, mm. she just wasn't having it. Huh. Something as simple as that. She wouldn't, wouldn't hear of it. I love that you quote the doctors at the time, and someone said, don't expect much of Susan. Did that mark you at all? Did it leave any wounds on you? Well, I was uh, a few months old, so I couldn't really say anything. But as you get older and you get to know about things, you say, well, why should they actually play God and try and, try and label me? Mm -hmm. We don't know how things are going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, years later, I, I proved them wrong. Were you always interested in music? I mean, you sang in choirs from the time you were 12. Uh, you, you, you continued to sing at the pubs, which we'll talk about in a moment. W music, was it always part of your life? My well, mother and father had it. Everybody had it in the family because there was always some element of music in the family. You know, so it was sort of infectious, really. You can't really avoid it. <laughs> and so you did it for joy. I mean, you did it because it was a natural outgrowth of your joy and your expression. It was also a very natural, natural way of expression as well, because um, being, being, being the way I was with Asperger's, being born with that means you have some difficulty in communication. Mm -hmm. So music was my way of communicating. Mm. The, the Asperger's, you were just diagnosed with that in what, 2012? Not 2012. too long ago. 2012. So that's to put the record straight. It wasn't brain damage I had, but it's Asperger's. Uh, the children called you Simple Susie in school, probably because of the Asperger's, the difficulty learning, mm -hmm. or, or that particular type of learning. Mm -hmm. um, it must have been a great cross for you. Well, children are cruel when they, when, they, when they grow up, they realize they've been wrong, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I've gone a lot better than them now because I'm, I'm a bit older now. Mm -hmm. You know, did, people did you, do that. Did your faith help you overcome some of that bullying and some of that scorn? Not just about the bullying, it's about life in general, you know, because if you don't have a faith, you've got nothing really to hold on to. Let's talk for a moment about your mother. Uh, when your father Patrick passed away, you decided to care for your mother and cared for her, lived at, at home with her till she passed. What was that like? Why did you make that decision? Well, I was the only one left in the house. Mm. But instead of going away and leaving her, you just, you do the natural thing mm. and you look after her. She was very frail, she was very sick at the time, so you just look after her. Mm. That's the kind of thing you would be expected to do, really. Mm. You loved her intensely. What did she teach you? What did she give you that you still use and call upon today? I like to think she's given me a, a good example in life, that, that she taught me the difference between right and wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, that sort of stayed with me. Mm -hmm. you, you've said in some interviews recently that you still feel she's with you, you still feel her presence. She's still, she's still with me, yes. She's, she's died physically, but not spiritually. 
Mm -hmm. You still live in your mother's house? I still do, yes. Why do you do that? I mean, you could have any house you'd like in the whole wide world. I did buy a posh house. I know that. You know, but uh, I didn't like living there because it was, it was too lonely, but my niece lives there now. Mm. And so, so you, stay, you stay in the house. It's cozy, I, I imagine, and familiar. I know all my neighbors and they know me. I've read an awful lot about you in the last few days preparing for this interview. And many reporters have come across people in the pubs, people at church, and they say, you know, she's still one of us. She's still connected to us. You still go and sing karaoke at the pub, at the I Crown like a, Pub. I like a laugh. <laughs> I like a good laugh. Susan, you could have a laugh at Carnegie Hall, but you go down to the pub. Why, why do you keep that up? It's always important to keep your roots and to keep your friends. Because if you don't have that, well, you haven't got much, really. You said that St. Bernadette is an inspiration to you. Why? Because of, I visit Lourdes. Ah. She's a very great inspiration to me. Hmm. What about her personality inspired you, or her example? Well, she came from very humble beginnings. Mm. She was very much the underdog. But she ended up being a very great person in God's eyes. Yeah. I love, and I think the whole world loved, that moment when you first burst onto the scene on Britain's Got Talent. And like Bernadette, you were underestimated. People judged you the moment you walked out. And yet, when you opened that voice up, and everyone heard. There wasn't a dry eye in the house. And how old are you, Susan? I am 47. <laughs> and that's just one side of me. <laughs> <laughs> OK, what's the dream? I, I'm trying to be a professional singer. And why hasn't it worked out so far, Susan? I've never been given the chance before, but he's hoping it'll change. OK, and who would you like to be as successful as? Elaine Page. Elaine like Page. That. What are you going to sing tonight? I'm going to sing I Dreamed a Dream from the Miserables. OK. <laughs> Big song. <laughs> yeah? Yes. What was that moment like for you, personally? Well, I feel I was inspired by, 
by Our Lady because mm. I was up against the wall. My mother just died. Mm. My circumstances were very dire. I tried for many auditions before mm. and never got anywhere. And I feel that uh, she was helping me mm. at that particular time. And that, that, that was meant to be. I, I love that even in 1999, you poured all your life savings into creating a demo tape. You sent it around to places. Nothing happened. Your mother wanted you to audition for Britain's Got Talent and was certain you could, you could win. She actually encouraged me to do auditions for other places as well oh. because she believed in me. Hmm. You know, and mm. my, my, my mother, sister Mary was a good singer as well, and I thought I'd carry on the tradition. Huh. And what do you think she would say if she were here today, your mother, Bridget? I think she'd be very proud of me. I think she'd be saying, you know, calm down a bit, you know, and <laughs> just take it all in your stride and enjoy yourself. Huh. But you seem to be enjoying yourself. And when you sing, there is this, um, it's a spirit. It's a spirit of joy. Are you aware of that? Are you experiencing that when you sing? I'm not really aware of anything spiritual. Mm -hmm. But I just know that I give a lot of pleasure to people and they make, kind of, make people happy. Mm -hmm. So there must be, must be something there that makes them happy. Mm. You have achieved amazing things in these last few years. You've sung for Pope Benedict. Uh, you, sung, you sang with your childhood idol, Donny Osmond, in Vegas. Oh, <laughs> right, okay. so, so here's my question. What was more satisfying, singing for the Pope or singing with Donny Osmond? As, I both, as they are both good celebrities, uh -huh. I would put them both on an equal and mm -hmm. say they were, they were great to work with. Do you see yourself as a role model for the underdog? I have to give this one a bit of thought. When you put yourself in uh, the public eye, you are a role model mm -hmm. and people look up to you. Mm -hmm. It's up to you to maintain an example like my mother did with me. So I like to think I can give an example to other people. Mm -hmm. Why has it taken you so long, Susan Boyle, to tour America? You have yet to do this. Was it nerves? Was it uncertainty about this, uh, the, what audiences would expect here? When you do a tour, it takes a lot of preparation mm -hmm. and you have to do it in a measured way Mm -hmm. and at the right time. Mm -hmm. Four years ago, or whenever, was not the right time because I didn't really feel I was ready. Mm -hmm. But I feel I'm ready now to say a big thank you to them and this is my way of doing it. Huh. What can we expect from the tour? You can expect some songs you may know, some songs you may not know. You can expect to have a good time. Why do you think the world has so embraced you? Of all the singers, there are millions of them out there. Why is Susan Boyle a performer that people not only want to come and see, but they want to hear their vo th that voice every day of their lives, in their car, at home. Well, apart from the obvious answer, luck, I think probably it's because you get what you see. When you look at your journey to this moment, do you see this as a mission for you? Is there a mission for Susan Boyle in all of this? Well, God uses you in a way to really uh, be a kind of example of people. I think this was God's way of saying, this is what you can do, Susan. This is what I have for you. Mm -hmm. I have a talent, but it's not mine, it's his. Mm -hmm. So it's his way of saying, you've got a talent, you've got to go out there and use it. Susan Boyle's new album, Hope, hit stores on October 21st. For information on Susan's US tour and how you can get tickets, visit SusanBoyleMusic.com. That is all the time we have for this week. Until next week, the show continues on Facebook and Twitter. Like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter. Let me know what you think of tonight's show. And the links are at RaymondArroyo.com. Now, do not miss next week's show. We'll take you to the only Catholic choir boys school in the United States. And these little powerhouses are dominating the billboard charts right now. The boys of the St. Paul's Choir School joins us. And we'll have a special round table on that final report of the extraordinary synod on the family. In the meantime, we'll be scouting the world over for all that is seen and unseen. On behalf of the staff and crew of EWTN News, thanks for watching. I'm Raymond Arroyo from Washington, D.C. We leave you tonight with Susan Boyle singing You Raise Me Up from her new album, Hope. And boy, do we need a song right about now. Here it goes. Bye now. My heart put in me Then I am here And sing here in the sun Till you come and sit a while with me, you raise me up till I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong. 
Thank you.